So, welcome to my channel. I want to show you something which a few of my friends encountered. A lot of them actually run into space problems on their laptop. In this case, it's a MacBook, MacBook Air, some other device. And if you look at the prices, you can get a new, for example, MacBook Air for around about a thousand euros with a 256 gigabyte SSD. And if you run out of space, consider that the new brand new MacBook Air nets you around about 1,500 euros. So that's like a 500 euro difference. But you can get this much cheaper done if you use this little hack to exchange the hard drive. So we can take this hard drive, for example, and a small adapter, and we take out the existing hard drive, we copy it over to the new one, and then you basically get the same kind of upgrade for around about 150 euros. I think that's worth it. So let's have a look how we can do that. I very much recommend the Samsung hard drive that you've seen because it has a very good reputation for being reliable and very quick. In particular, the NVMe model is the one that has like very high transfer rates and I've had good experience with it. Of course, any other NVMe hard drive is also suitable in that sense. The important bit is that it's a M2, so M.2 uh, NVMe hard drive and in particular what you notice is like this very small device and it has like these keys up here. Then the other thing that you need is the adapter, which adapts the normal NVMe slots, which is like the top here, to the MacBook standard. And the adapter that I found, which works pretty well, I have to say so far, is the one linked in the description. It's basically this one. And what it contains is uh, a piece that goes uh, behind the hard drive and you plug it in and you plug it into the device. It also contains a couple of these screwdrivers, actually three in total, which are enough to open up the, the laptop and actually exchange it if you don't have these at home, because they're kind of unusual, not everyone has them. So this kit basically contains everything to open the laptop and exchange these parts. So that's recommended. Of course, there are, I think, two other adapters that you can also choose. You have to pay attention that it understands the hard drive model that you're buying. So pay a lot of attention that it lists the model number that you have. Not every revision of every hard drive is supported. Not every hard drive from the same manufacturer is supported. So take care because if the adapter doesn't work, then it might just be that your hard drive isn't supported at all and then you might have to exchange it. Lastly, there's also the external hard drive case that you probably gonna need to copy over all your data. I found that this model works pretty well. It's basically just an enclosure where you plug in any NVMe hard drive, M2 NVMe hard drive. So technically there's much more choice out there because there are probably tens or hundreds of these ones. The model that I chose looks to be relatively cheap. It's around 40 euros and supports, I suppose, a lot of these devices. Again, take care. It needs to be the M2 NVMe version. They are similar ones, even from the same manufacturer, which have a slightly different standard and they differ by less than a millimeter in size, but they just don't work. Take especially care that it's basically the right standard, otherwise you will run into trouble. I actually got the wrong one at the first time, and the only thing that it did was basically made the hard drive very, very hot. So take care not to do the same mistake. So in order to copy over your data, it's not enough to just have your MacBook. The software that I used is the Carbon Copier, which basically supports the one thing that we really want, which is a one-to-one -one copy of the hard drive. So it doesn't copy files, it copies the whole hard drive at a lower layer, which means that in theory and in practice, the new hard drive is an exact clone of the previous one, which means you don't have to reinstall the operating system. And that's very important because it just saves you a lot of time and it keeps all your settings, keep everything the same. So you just exchange the hard drive once the copy is made and it should just work. In addition, you actually still have a backup because your old hard drive still exists. You could, in theory, just plug it back in in case something doesn't work. So I think that's the much more preferable way of doing this than doing a full reinstallation of your operating system because it just takes much less time. You don't lose any data, you don't lose any settings. So I would rather rather go with this option than any other one. This small MacBook Air. And we already got the SSD, uh, Samsung One 
one terabyte. And we have the extension set because this is a MacBook and this is an NVMe drive, we need an adapter. And if you look closely, it looks pretty much the same, except the keys in the front are a little bit different. So this is the MacOS proprietary adapter here, and this is the M2 NVMe adapter, and this slots right in. At least from the ratings, this should be good, but we will see if it actually works later. So this is all prepared, and we have a backup of the hard drive, and we also did like a full copy of the existing SSD drive in here on, onto this disk. So in theory, this should be bootable and it should boot right up when we exchange it. So how do we do that? We need to open the backside and thankfully I already got like a set of the right bits for it. So it's a little five star bit that goes into these very, very, very tiny screws. And it's about uh, 10 of them and I've already removed a few and now I'm just gonna unscrew the rest. So actually I thought before that all the 10 screws would be the same, but there are actually two which are slightly longer. And those are the two here on the top. And it might depend on the model, I'm not 100% sure. So we just need to remember that these two go on the top piece, close to the edge. That's all the screws. And now we should be able to open it. Um, so it's just a piece normally I think for phones. It's like a set for all the different pieces that you might use for phone repair. But I think we might be able to use this to slot in here. And I'm just very, very careful because I don't think there is anything glued. So first thing, we need to disconnect the battery because otherwise this might be a little bit dangerous. And since it's internal batteries, we need to unplug it. So different models have different ways of getting the cable out. For example, what we have here is uh, model 6.1 and you actually have to pull the adapter up instead of backwards. So pay attention to the device that you're having because there are like different ways of how the connector works and you might run into trouble if you don't have the right way of pulling it out. Okay, so we have the battery disconnected. This should be safe now and I'm just gonna unscrew the existing SSD and put in our new one. Here we have the SSD and we start by unscrewing the screw on the opposing end of the SSD and then we can pull it out very easily, pulling it up a little bit then taking it out of the slot. And this should be fairly easy. Once that's done we can put it aside. This is basically it's a very small hard drive, it's a 128GB version and we are just gonna replace it with the bigger one now. For comparison these are the two devices, they look fairly similar now, you can see that both of the slots have the same shape. This is the new replacement, uh, the bigger hard drive and again it's fairly easy, it should just slot in. If there is any resistance don't force it in because it's very likely that you got the wrong adapter. So it should be super easy to plug it in and it should fit fairly well because now we can just take the screw again, put it in the opposing end and screw it tight, not too strongly of course, and that should be fairly straightforward operation. So we have the SSD in, the new one, it's connected and looks fairly good. And now we're just gonna connect the battery again, clean it up a little bit, get the dust out, close it up and then it should hopefully boot and should work as before but with a much higher capacity drive. Now we can turn it on and see if it works. So all works. Um, my wife was a little bit excited because she thought she would get like a new computer, but I'm very sorry. Uh, this one still works. Now it has like eight times the capacity. It's all still there. Like the idea with this kind of way of doing it that is that we just have like a one of one, one to one copy of the hard drive. Everything is as before. It's just more storage. There are other ways of doing this. I think this one is the most easy one because everything just stays the same. You don't have to reinstall anything and it's just more storage for actually not that much money. So I think this looks pretty good. And we might even have the opportunity to sell this hard drive. Um, I mean it's used but um, it goes on eBay for around about 30 euros at the moment. So it definitely makes sense to sell this one unless we can't use it. So as the saying goes, please like and subscribe if you like the content or comment if you have anything that was unclear. 
Um, in the future, I might just post some more content around coding, programming, um, potentially just looking at some new devices or traveling. We'll see. Have a good day.